And that's true as well. Good afternoon, church. I want to know where Tino got that cool t-shirt from. <laughs> NECU. NECU. <laughs> I'm still using it. <laughs> no, I stopped at 35. I won't tell you how old I am. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy uh, Sabbath. It's a pleasure for me to be here with you all again. As Tina already said, my name is Michael Dante. Brief introduction. Uh, don't assume anyone really knows who I am. So, I'm at Seminar Venice. Amen. Amen. I was baptized May 27th, 1999. And I'm just a young man who loves to share God's word. And I have the opportunity to do so. I live in Wolverhampton. My wife couldn't be here with me today, unfortunately. My three children really had a cold. Uh, but I blame my brother, it's his fault. Because <laughs> my wife was staying with his wife when my, when my son and John went to France. My granddad was a bit sick, had two operations. So we we're very close to our grandparents in France. So we went over there. And so my wife couldn't be on her own, except my, my sister in laws When we arrived there, his children were sick. So obviously you know what happened. They gave it. They gave a gift to my kids. A little unwelcome gift. So they were left sick. So yeah, man. They put it in the envelope and send it back to them. So apart from that, um, yeah, I just love to share God's word. And I'm attending now GBK. I used to attend Wolverhampton Central. We moved to a smaller church. Um, my wife likes the church. Oh, we we're now finishing at GBK Adventist Church. And Tina contacted me and said if I could come here and help out doing AY. So I'm just praying that you know we'll be blessed. Before I begin though, if we just stand up quickly, stretch our legs. You know, some of you look a bit tired. <laughs> I don't know how long you've been here. It's the food, it's the food. <laughs> Did you have lunch here, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Alright, yeah, just stretch your hands, stretch your arms, I mean I should say. Take a few deep breaths. The hardest time to preach or do a presentation is after lunchtime. <laughs> the hardest time. So, thankfully, I'm not going to preach. You can take a seat. Um, it's going to be interactive. It's going to be interactive. If I can ask a favour, if you could try and keep that door shut. Um, not because I don't love children, but it's making a bit of noise when I'm sitting back here. So, I'd like to, everybody to benefit as much as possible and not be disturbed. Um, so if that would be good. Um, what else? Yes, so a brief introduction before I just open the word of prayer. This topic of music is a very broad, broad topic. And I'm going to tell you what I'm not going to cover, which will help you understand what I'm going to cover, all right? I'm not gonna particularly focus today. If I get invited back, if there's space in the calendar, you can focus maybe on making right choices about what we need to listen to. We will touch on that, but the great emphasis I want to focus on is the big elephant in the room when we usually talk about music in the church, okay? We have two major issues surrounding music in the church. Number one is the, 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 the secular music that our young people have challenges over. Would you agree? Okay, that's a challenge. There are two major issues. I just straighten that. Uh, it's cool, it's still cool. Oh, I won't, I won't. It's <laughs> right then. I won't, I won't shame you up. Okay. <laughs> There's two major issues in the church surrounding music. With one issue over here where we talk about secular music and the decisions made on what music should be listened to. And that usually affects mostly the young people. Do we agree? That's that issue over here. The second issue is what I'm going to be talking which is the music in the church. Is that, are we clear? That's the issue I want to be addressed, because for me, that's really the big elephant in the room. Because this one over here, if you're sincere, you know what decision you need to make. It's not hard. It's not hard to know what music I should be listening to if you're sincere, okay? I shouldn't have to say, Music that has swear in it, you shouldn't listen to that. Music that says women are B-I-T-C-H, you shouldn't be listening. To me, that's common sense. If you're growing up in the church and in an ambitious home, you should know those things. 
If you grew up in the world, if there's anyone here who's a visitor, have no Christian background, then I do believe that is a conversation you do need to have because you grew up with a certain different set of standards. But for most of us who grew up in the church, come on, we know what music we should listen to. The challenge is how to leave it. Would you agree? Is there any young people in the, in the church? Yeah? You guys? All right. Would you agree that that's most of the challenge? I'm not going to put you on the spot, but let's say there's music that you know is not really Christian that you like. Is it an issue of whether I know it's right or wrong, or is the greater challenge on how to leave it alone? Which one would you say is the greater challenge? Knowing the difference between right and wrong, right music and wrong music, or leaving the wrong music, which one, is more, which one would you say is the greater challenge? Leaving it, that's it. And I believe so, because I was in that position one time as well, where I grew up in the church, or I was growing up in the church, sorry, and I was listening to music which wasn't good, and I knew it. But the problem was I liked it, and the second thing, how do I give it up when I come to the place that I want to give up? How do I leave it behind? So, we're going to touch on that just briefly, all right? And then we're going to go into the music in the church. Is that all right? Amen. Well, not that. You know, if you say no, it's just being polite, you know? But is that clear, I should say? Is that clear? Amen. All right. So let me just start with a brief word of prayer as my custom, and then we'll get into this, um, this study. And also, brothers and sisters and visiting friends, this is going to be interactive. So I haven't got a set of notes that I have to get right to the end. I haven't got slides today. I'm going to be presenting. If you have questions on the topic, please keep it to topic. I'll take those questions as we're going on. Is that all right? Yeah. All right, so feel free to ask your questions. Bow your heads with me as we just have a short word of prayer. Father in heaven, your people are here to receive your word. So honor us with your presence to teach us your word. As we discover new ideas, new things, maybe thoughts we have never considered before, I pray that we may come to a knowledge of truth and right understanding, not just for ourselves, but for those that we come into contact with. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so let's deal. Let's just touch on the issue of music in terms of right choices. And my first question is this. My first question is this. What does the Bible say? No, actually, let me put this question. And you can answer this, brothers and sisters, and answer it, you can, you don't have to put your hand up. Would you say music is a powerful medium? Would you say it's powerful? Yes. Very powerful. We all know that by experience, correct? Yeah. All right? Music is very, very powerful. Second question, would you say music is right or I don't want to use a fancy, yeah. Would you say music is moral or amoral? Amoral meaning it's neither right or wrong. What would you say? What would be your opinion? Who would, put your hand up if you believe music is moral. That means it has a right and a wrong. Okay? Put your hand up if you think music is amoral. It's neither right or wrong, it's neutral. So no one believes that it's neutral. Neutral, one hand. Okay, good. We have a brave person here. Good. I'm going to tell you my answer, and then I'm going to go and discuss it. I believe mu music is amoral. I used to believe that music was moral, like most of you. Yeah. And I'm going to set forth the reasons why. And this is why we have to make it interactive. Because you're going to be sitting there looking at me like this. <laughs> Go on. Is that your case? And that's okay, brothers and sisters. Because we have to deal with this issue, brothers and sisters. Alright? Music is very powerful, and not only that, but in the church, it's even more contentious. Wouldn't you agree? It's very contentious. Alright? So, firstly, let's deal with that point about music being moral or amoral. Let's go to, let me ask this question. Yeah, let's go to 2 Timothy 3, 16. 2 Timothy 3, 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. 
Could someone close that door, please? Because I can hear a lot of noise. It's a bit distracted. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. Are we there, brethren? Yeah. All right. Look what it says. All scripture is given by what? Inspiration. Inspiration of God. And it's profitable for? For doctrine, for? Reproof, for? Correction, for? Instruction in what? Righteousness. Righteousness. Now pause it for a moment. How much scripture does the Bible say is profitable for doctrine? All. And it says, I can hear a lot of noise. It's very distracting. I don't want to start speaking loud just to cover the noise. If we, if children, every little child on the side of my voice, children, put your hand up. Yeah, children, children, put your hand up. Every child who can understand English. Okay, now children, I'm going to introduce myself because probably you think this section is not for you. That's probably the problem. Children, hands up. And you as well. Can you understand English? Over here. Little man, over here. Okay, good. Right, children, all hands up. All right. Now, my name is Michael. What's my name? Michael. I'm here again. What's my name? Michael. You two in the hall, in the middle. What's my name? She's looking for a seat. She's like, I don't know what the name is. I want a seat. <laughs> Nandi. What's my name? Michael. Michael. Now, this program is for you as well. So I want to pay close attention. This program is about music. What did I say? Music. All right. Now, what's my name? Michael. Now, is the program for you or is it just for the adults? Oh. See? It's for you as well. So say it's for me. It's for? Good. Now what's my name? Michael. Do you like music? Yeah. Okay. Is all music good? Yeah. All music in the world is good? Yeah. All right. So what if there was music saying that God's an idiot? Is that music good? No. You just said all music was good. You're contradicting yourself. <laughs> this is why you have to listen. Yeah. So, can you make me a promise? Are you going to listen to this program? Yeah. Good. That's it, that's it, that's it. Because this program is also for me. Okay. All right, brother. You're too excited. All right. So, the question is this, brothers and sisters. It says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Now, What's the largest book in the Bible? Psalms. Okay. Does anybody know what the word Psalms means? Psalms. So the largest book in the Bible is a bunch of what? Psalms. Now those songs were inspired by you according to 2 Timothy 3.16. Who were they inspired by? Right. By God himself. Now follow the logic, brothers and sisters. Follow the logic. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So the Psalms were inspired by who? God. So these are songs that were inspired by God. Now according to verse 16, these songs are profitable for doctrine. These songs can instruct us into what? Righteousness. Are we following? So that means that there are songs that can teach you and I about righteous living. Let's flip the principle then. That means there are songs that can teach you and I how to be unrighteous. Are we following? Right? Now is that the music itself or is that certain elements within music? Think about it. Answer me. I'm question to the floor. All right. Who says it's all of music or it's elements that can teach us those things? Elements. Because, and let's let, you might not agree. Okay. So, can a beat teach me anything? What do you think? Yeah. So what do you think a beat can teach me? To move. To move. Okay. To dance. But can it teach me anything moral or immoral? No. No. So, 
This is why I said at the beginning, I think moral music is amoral. Because when we're talking about music, we're talking about a package. I know why we say music is moral, because we understand certain music can influence. Here we're reading that there are songs that can teach us into righteousness. All right? So we have to be clear what we're saying when we say music is moral. Because if you have music which is instrumental, just instrumental music, can that instrumental music teach me anything moral? No words. There's no words, brothers and sisters. Can that music teach you anything moral or immoral? No. Right? So we have to be clear then, in the music we're talking about that can teach us moral or immoral things, we're looking at the words, the content. The content, I'll keep going. That's good. Yes, you need to stand up. Oh, you don't have to stand up. Sorry, go on. And speak louder, speak louder. You don't have to stand up, Peter. Speak louder. The reason why, because if you know a song, you say it's a worldly song, and then you hear the instrumental, your subconscious is going to put the words to that song. Do you know what I mean? Okay, but that's something different you're talking about. That's now association, isn't it? No. Yeah. Because let's take your baby, just one and you're playing instrumental music, that instrumental music cannot convey any lessons, can it? What we can teach, which we agreed on, is it can teach how to move. But can it teach a moral, can it instruct? The word instruct means, okay, I want you to go to Sainsbury's. Mom, how do I go to Sainsbury's? Take that road, take, that was our instruction given you. Imagine you, your son said, Mom, how do I get to Sainsbury's? You play a song, an instrumental. There you go. People look at you like, and you're crazy. But if the song had the directions in there with the instrument music, it will help him remember the instructions. Are we clear? All right. So when we say that music, those of us who say sorry, that music is moral. I'm all I'm suggesting, and this presentation, brothers and sisters, is only going to challenge us to think and go away and study. This is not a typical. This is not a sermon. Trying to just convey some new ideas here. Are we are, are we okay? All right. So really, we're studying and, and and looking at ideas. Maybe we haven't thought of through and through. Because brothers and sisters, any of us who have children, we have to be clear what we're saying in the home. All right. And this is why I've had to reconsider a lot of my old ideas about music because now my children are asking me why, daddy. Why, daddy? Now, and I'm giving them answers, and the answers are not making sense to me. <laughs> I don't have to be in that position, but I'm in that position right now. So, let me make myself clear. The scripture says here that there are all the scriptures can do something, yes? And all the scriptures can instruct us into righteousness. But our focus is the Psalms because our theme today is music, right? But if we flip the principle, we get from the Bible then a teaching telling us that there are songs that can instruct us into unrighteousness. And put that plainly. There are some brothers and sisters that are teaching your young ladies how to be immodest. Now, let me be clear. I'm not talking about beats. We're going to deal with that just a little later. I'm talking about content, words. There are songs right now. Who's heard of grime? Who hasn't heard of grime music? Who hasn't heard of grime? Never heard of grime. Don't be afraid. This is the point I'm going to make. You have to. Okay, haven't heard of grime. Who has heard of? What's the other one now? Drill. Who hasn't heard of drill? Hasn't heard of drill. Why? Grime is now. Grime is the most popular genre of music with your young people in England. Think of hip hop and rap, but UK version and much more rough and rugged, all right? Hip hop is, we came from America, grime came from England, the streets of London, all right? But grime, out of grime came drill music. Drill was influenced from Chicago. Drill is a slang term meaning boom, getting a machine gun and you're, boom, you're shooting up, I was going to say the gaff, shooting up people, okay? Drill music is 100% just about violence and gang. That's it, all right? Now, the reason why I ask that question, 
do we know about it is because that is the music influencing or having an influence about your tune. Notice none of the young people said I haven't heard of it. If you go to school, fact you've heard of Brian and Joe. Fact. Because there's going to be a young man coming to your young self saying, hey, yo, look, check this out on the phone. So just by proxy, your children would, will hear of Brian and Drew and would have their favorite artists. Why well, I mention those two genres? Because those genres don't, well, not Grime, you cannot, you have positive Grime, but let's take Drew. Drill at the moment, there's nothing positive about it in terms of content. And for the most part, grind is not. Alright? It doesn't say, wait till you get married, respect your mum and your dad. If your mum says, come in at 9 o'clock, come in at 9 o'clock. Right? Now, brothers, now, parents, children, I hear you making a lot of noise. Children, 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 they are, I can hear so much noise there. If that's good, then boy, that's good. I work with that. All right, parents. Question to you: If there was a song that played a beat that you were really comfortable with, but it had a positive message, and it's not—I'm not talking about God, not, not, not the gospel. But it's a positive message. All right. Stay in school. Do your homework. Blah blah blah. Respect your parents, and they were listening to it. You came home, and at first, you're thinking, what's that I'm hearing? And you hear, but the words are clear enough for you to understand. You're like, oh. Would you say, turn off, turn off that foolishness? Be honest. If you say yes, I don't mind. I, I told you, I'm not here to convince anybody. I'm here to challenge us. That's all. Is that all right? So don't think I have to be convinced. You can be honest there and say, nah, man, I'll still say turn off and then give your reasons. Who would say turn off? One at the back. Are you brave enough to tell us why, sister? Positive lyrics, positive message, but the beat is something you don't like. Why would you say turn it off? You two say turn it off? I would say turn it off. Why? Because. You would? Yeah, in Jamaica, they put a lot of music, like, like, rock and passion, passion music. Yes. And now they start to. But the same Christian version. Brother, I said not Christian. This ain't a scenario. No. Yeah, I did it for a reason. I said that for a reason. Right. I'm not going to touch on that now. We might get there, but I'm gonna I said we were saying stay in school, do your homework, respect your parents. It, we're not mixing in yeah. Jesus. So we, we, we can deal with that, but this scenario, just, it's just positive. So it's not swearing. Right? It's not cussing, it's not glamorizing and glorifying any sinful lifestyle or any criminal activities. It's positive, because that music actually exists. What is that? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's actually what I'm trying to explain. Oh, so, yeah, and it's still explain your point, that, sorry. That, that could say fine. Okay. That could say fine. Right. But, brothers and sisters, if we can respect the brother, The way that, you know, previous beats, yeah. I understand this beats are the and that bashment. So you would say to him, I want you to turn it off. And is that the explanation I'm going to give you? Because the Bashman Beats is associated with that lifestyle. Okay, cool, cool. Appreciate your honesty. Who else? Who had their hand up? And said so they would say, turn it off. Right on. It's more than the lyrics that message. You know, if I say to my wife, I love you. And what message would give me an example where a rhythm can convey? And we're not talking about Christian mixing Christian lyrics yet. We're just talking about positive, where you feel it's a negative message. It's conveying a negative message. Just a beat. Could you give me an example? I can't give you an example. Oh, well. Fair enough, okay. 
So notice, brothers and sisters, I see your hand. Just, just, just notice what we're saying. Two times we mentioned association. Now this is very key, brothers and sisters. We have to be clear, is it subjective or is it moral? Because if we're not clear what we're saying to our children, our young people, it's confusion. Now there's nothing wrong in what we've just said. Look, this has an association, blah, 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 blah. And what I'm challenging, I see your hands, uh, let me give you numbers. One, two, who else had their hand up? Just two? Okay, one, two. We have to be very clear that if we are talking about association... Is this one on that? This one's on that. Oh, okay. Thank you, brother. If we're not careful, brother, if we're not careful, what would then happen is what we're putting our tastes and experiences that's what the Bible says, though. Bashment is wrong. Why is bashment wrong? Because such and such and such. And really what we're actually talking about is the power of association and our experiences. But morally speaking, is the beat itself morally and inherently wrong? And this is what we're kind of discussing, which is why I'm giving the scenario. Are we, are we clear? All right. One and then um, two. To say that black people are slaves, that's an argument people use. That book, I want not to do Christianity. Because look at those guys' intentions, look what they've done with it, I don't want to do anything with Christianity. Same line of reasoning. But they, but this is they Why is that different? The Bible. They so did man create music then? No, no, they created that style. God's given us a certain level of music. So are you saying there's certain styles which are inherently wrong then? But then again, is it is the intention that makes it wrong or the thing itself is in every role? Um, I, like I said, I, I speak to the fact that, that there's an intention there to draw people to, to um, worship God and a certain yeah, spirit and spirit. I understand what I'm saying. I acknowledge, of course, in the, that's logic. Intention, people have intentions to create music and then they create this music for worship of a deity. Yeah. But what I'm saying, I'm challenging your premise is that, so then that makes them the beat, it, are you saying that's problematic? I'm telling you that I'm suggesting, sorry, that's problematic because if you take that same amount of reasoning and apply it to classical pieces there are people who use classical music and their intention was to worship Mary the idol, their intention uh, a dedication to the dead but the music itself sounds amazing, does that now make the music just because it sounds classical, you're not going to say, that's evil music. Let's be honest. We've never made that line of reasoning. Most of our, compo a lot of composers, sorry, were Freemasons. Okay? High degree Freemasons. Luciferian. And wrote magnificent pieces. Now, when you don't know that, and you're turning on to classical, and you're like, wow, this is an amazing piece. And then they also turn and say, did you know he was a 
homosexual and he wrote that for his lover, you go, ah! But just five minutes ago, let's be honest, you were, you were like, this is amazing. But now there's an association now, and now you don't listen to it. But you're not going to now say that the thing itself, that peace, is inherently evil. You're just going to be like, I don't want to feel comfortable with that because now I know why he did it. But with black stars of music, we're like, no, no, no. In no scenario, in any situation, we can use that style of music because it was used for voodoo, blah, 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 blah. But we let slide classical pieces of music. If we're being honest, we're being a bit inconsistent. Can you, can you honestly differentiate between styles of classical? There's only one. There's not styles of classical, there's just classical. There is a sense of different styles of classical. Like there's baroque music, and then we're just creating your um, um, to honor. So would you throw away, would you throw away classical? This is my point. There's just not one set of classical music, that's classical. Yeah, but you wouldn't throw, but then you would throw away, let's say, hip hop or those beats that you associate with devil worship. You just throw it away. And if you're with that beat, you throw it away. But you're not doing it classical. You're just gonna, you're gonna do away with just that person of classical. I'm saying that sounds inconsistent. We're going back and forth and I'll give our people time. I appreciate your, 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 your comments. In the world that we are living in, we can never um, play down association. That's right. Uh, there are lots of music just by listening to them because they um, are associated with some things. You would uh, take them as negative. You would not, you know, you would not even if you change your words on them because of the association. You still wouldn't feel comfortable. But then, uh, I just want to put this uh, to you. There was a, an experiment done um, a few years ago uh, with music and plant. I don't know if you have seen this on the, 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 the YouTube or so on. And they put the plant before different types of music, reggae, classical, uh, and soul. And the, the plants all responded differently to the beat of the music. So, it seems to me that the music itself, the way it's, the devil, devil was, was made with pipes and drums in it uh, when he was created. And he was uh, the mastermind behind music in, in heaven. I believe that if here he comes here and he, he, he corrupts some of the things that we have, even just the beat alone, he knows what it is to, to disrupt our rhythm. Because if, if, if you listen to a marching beat, no music is there, but you just want to march. So I think that we cannot totally say it's amoral. We have to be very careful to say that we don't throw that out. We have to be very careful where we say it's immoral because there, we, music, that's one of the things that will corrupt people and it can build you. So we have to be very careful to say the beat itself does not do nothing to you because if it can do that to plant, it can do something to us. So you're using a tech, you're using a plant and how plants responded to how to make your case to say that music is right. not a mod. Right. I just want to be clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you oh, saying wait, that it's wait, wait, not? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> but, but even so, a lot of the things that happen in medical science. But that's even, wait, wait, wait. That's not medical, wait. that's a plant. Yeah, yeah. Many of you do tests on a human being. Yes. But even so, all right. You just said, no, no Elder, I, 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 Elder, I, 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 Elder, all yeah. I'm asking is, where do you stand? Do you say we have to be careful? Yeah, I just want to be clear. I would not. Are you saying? I'm not saying completely okay. that all right. it, it, it's amoral. All right. Because really, I can, as uh, Brother Clive say, I can say, I love you, you know, even at all, if you, 
if you burn, I mean, this I'm this one that you have to be careful. What you no, 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 watch out, you don't back, don't no, back slide now. You know the DJ was here. Be careful what you are you're, you're saying because certain rhythm evokes some emotions within you. You don't have to hear the words, or don't have to be associated with something, but if it evokes emotions in you, it causes positive or negative. Yeah, I agree, but we have to be clear that that, because it can evoke, I can ask this question, are emotions moral or amoral? Is anger, no, let me be quick, simple. Is anger right or wrong? What would you say? Neither. I'll play into my trap here, I'm giving you a clue. The Bible says the anger is sin So the answer is what then? Right. If I say is love right and wrong? Is love right, is love wrong? Right. It depends on what you love. If I'm looking at a female getting battered and it causes anger and I go to her, hey, no one's going to say, why is she angry for? Nobody. So when we say evokes, even evokes emotions, all I'm saying we have to be clear on what we're saying, how we're saying it, because if we then if we then try and say, but the Bible said you should listen to reggae music, you're gonna have a problem finding the scripture to back up the point. That's all I'm saying. We have to be clear, it's because all of our points, as you notice, are subjective, meaning it's personal opinion, personal preference, sorry. It's a personal preference, association. The elders correct. We cannot, and we haven't even dealt with that, we cannot underestimate the power of association. But what has happened in our church, I see your hand. And brother over here, you had your hand up. Or did you, would you just agree to a point? Okay. We have to be clear here because what's happened, and I've grown up in the church, we, and I'll give you a scenario. My father plays the piano organ and he wanted to buy an organ for the church many, many years ago. I was a little, little boy. And the organ had the ability to create beats. You press start, boom, tap, boom, tap. Boom, boom, tap. Boom, was like, no. He's like, why? He's like, because it can make those beats. There was a debate in our church when I was a little boy for the electric guitar. For the electric guitar. Now, this is what is very funny about us as people. Now the electric guitar is no problem. Now, when my father was a boy, there's a famous song called um, Oh Happy Day. Oh Happy Day. Now today, most of us wouldn't even think anything wrong with that song. But when my parent was a child, that was the forbidden music. <laughs> yeah, that was forbidden because it was playing hard rock and it was accepted by the world. It was on top of the pops and it was a very famous gospel song that made its way, that broke records. It was the first time really, not the first time, but it was huge. And so parents and the church were like, that song is worldly, it's this, it's that. But then now if you play it now, even us who may consider ourselves conservative, don't really have a problem with it. So what happened? And so the electric guitar is a problem, but then it's not now. And then, you know, the drums is a problem in some churches still. And the uh, elder mentioned, rightly so, which I'm going to go to the text. Ezekiel 28 says that Lucifer was created with tabrets. Tabrets. And pipes. You look up the word tabrets, it's related to a percussive instrument. But we, but well, most of us, are not most, a lot of us in the church have a problem with percussion. But God creates a being with the ability to make percussion. So do we see there's a problem? You read that text, as I've read the text, and I have to ask myself a very serious question. Why did I have a problem with percussion when God created Lucifer with the ability to make percussion? Now, are there two extremes? Of course there's two extremes, right? If my new okay, um, let me ask you a question. For an appeal, and this is this is across the board for any denomination, for an appeal, what at 
atmosphere of music would you expect? Fast, slow, loud, and appeals being made? Slow. Slow. I watch a lot of YouTube, I watch a lot of videos of other Christian denominations, because sometimes I do research and whatnot, and every single time there's an appeal, what happens to the music? Slow and slow. It goes down. No matter what denomination you go to, everybody understands at this moment, to cause this particular emotion and response, this is the appropriate style of appropriate music right now, right? Is it possible that because we haven't taught principles about this, we've, we go to two extremes? So there's one extreme that throughout the entire service, the music is always jumpy and I can't, I don't want to describe it in negative terms. What's the number for not jumpy, I don't want to use that word, but upbeat. Upbeat, thank you. It's upbeat, all right? And there are churches that, or, or, or congregations, sorry, that want upbeat music all the time. And then, they, and then you have debates like the hymns are boring, no, it's rubbish. And that's another extreme. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. And then we argue about whether we should be upbeat or whether. Now let's be clear, the Bible talks about solemn music. But then Isaiah in Psalm 49, let me just read that carefully. Let me just read that for you. And I'm going to take that uh, the, the hand of the, the young lady at the back. Psalm 149. Listen to this, brothers and sisters. How much time does it tell you? Time or man? How much time do you call it? 42. 42. Okay, good. As I, uh, Psalm 49, brothers and sisters, Psalm 49, 149, sorry. Listen to this. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and he's praising the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. Who knows what timbrel is? Tambourine. In my, in my church, you weren't allowed to bring out the tambourine. I remember people used to get vexed when they see Sister Sonsa would bring out the I sorry, I used to laugh when I was a young man, and it still brings funny memories because she was very joyful. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! So we'd always be laughing. So I'm sorry. You know the association? <laughs> the timbre, people didn't like the timbre. There was some before, it's such a timbre. And as I thought, no, we're down. Trump! Shouldn't do it! Now, I'm reading the word of God. And the word of God says it's okay to praise God with the timbrel and the harp. The timbrel only has one job. What's his job? Rhythm. Just rhythm. So, what needs to govern us when we're dealing with rhythm? What needs to govern us? Our decision. And let me, before we ask that question, let me take your hand first. Sure? All right. What needs to govern us when we're dealing with rhythm? Because that's the big elephant in the room. Beats, rhythm. What do you think? Something needs to govern us. Because the Bible says you can use a timbre in your praises, but something definitely needs to govern us. Common sense tells us something needs to govern us. Because it can't be too slow, and it can't be so fast that I feel like I'm going to get a heart attack. So what do you think needs to govern us? Sorry? Give me some more practical because that's very broad. What does that mean? I mean, a musician's asking you, a young person's asking you, but how do I know how fast you do it, how slow, and you just say, glorify God. And they're like, well, I think this glorifies God. And people are like, what were you doing? And then they get told off. So we need something more tangible, practical, like an actual instruction. What needs to govern our rhythm? How do we know whether it's appropriate, inappropriate? How do we know? Um, can I say, we do it then by the Spirit of God. God can lead you and direct you in the way you should go. Even in your choosing of music. Because one of the things that's going to destroy, uh, you know, have a terrible effect and God's us the people is music. I agree. It's music. Sorry. Some of them are devil worshipping music. 
So you begin, you know, you know whether it's, uh, um, you know, it's from God, or it isn't. Because as you have that living day to day communion with God, God will not leave you in the dark. He will guide you. We are the last day people, my brethren. We are God's last day people. We are heading for heavenly pain. And God has not left us in the dark to fend for ourselves, to see whether this music is right and that music is right. God is willing to show us the path where we need to go on in choosing our music. I agree, sister. But this, that, that same thought that you've given, you hear people in other denominations say the exact same thing as you said, exact same passion, but then, I'll be honest, when I listen to what their interpretation is or spirit led, I'm questioning, is that of the spirit? And I'm sure you would do the same thing, like, is that really of the spirit? But then they say, man, when the spirit leads you, la la. So this is why I'm, I'm saying our, our explanation we have to give more practical reasons from the word of God to guide and make our decisions. One, two, three, four. Hold up, four. Mm -hmm. so, I skipped that on purpose. <laughs> yeah. As if not to focus on it right now, but yeah, it's so I said there, like what you both just said, other denominations actually dance, and like you said, they say they are laid by the Holy Spirit. That's right. That's right. So we need, we need some more. So my question, so let's try and focus on the one question about rhythm, because that's the big elephant in the room. We're always talking about music, rhythms. What should, and my question still stands, what do we need? What do we need to guide our decisions in knowing not to avoid both extremes when we're dealing with rhythm? Who is number two? Brother, you're, you're like two and a half. I'm a jump to the Well, actually, I know she's going to lie to jump the You're going to lie to jump the There you go. You're lucky. I'm picking up with music. All right. You're going to listen to a second. Like, uh, German. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yes, it was second music. <laughs> I've second music, like German bass. And if you show it, you bring music, I, I like a Christian music, and put in that same bass line in that gospel. You know, the way that you would dance the club is the way that probably in my dance in church with that same beat. So, I look at, for example, I'm watching Trey Tree Bien, when this lady sing. You know, it's just a nice, mellow music. A lot of the main big bass, a bass line is what send people crazy. Some. Yeah, some bass line. They, they hear a bass line, and they, even in church, they start down like the second thing. So, I think... But isn't that association? There are a group of people who've never been to the club and they will not associate that beat with the moves that you were taught. So again, does that make the beat wrong or is that your personal preference? This is the thing. You see, if we're making a rule, but then I'm giving you a scenario that the rule don't apply, we have to go, then it's not a rule, it's a personal preference. This is what's happening in our reason I'm like, my kids haven't been to a club yet. My kids don't know about those things yet. So if I play the same, which I do, I play some secular music, I don't think all secular music is wrong, and I play music with beats, they're not doing all the stuff that some of us would associate with that, because when we first heard it, the environment that we were in when we heard the tune, and the moves that we saw, we then learned. This is how you respond to certain music, to that beat, that passion. If you're seeing that all the time, there's no way you can read your mind straight away that that is for that. And I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm saying, but then we have to convey that's what we're saying. Not, but the Lord says, reggae is wrong, bashment is wrong. But well, we ain't got scripture, we've got personal preference. And that's fine. That's more intelligent and that's more logical. And that makes the person think, oh, because of this association, I've got to be careful. 
Because this is what is associated when we hear these kind of things. If I play bashment to Jesus loves me, the world is going to think a, a certain thing and they're going to react a certain way. So I've got to think, do I want that association with gospel music? But am I saying that's inherently wrong? I am saying no. I'm saying I'm not going to do that because of the association and that's not wise. That's a different argument than saying that's wrong in every situation, in every scenario, that's simple. That's what I'm trying to get us to think about. Does that make sense? So I'm not disagreeing with this type of association. Because that, that's logical. We have to take that in consideration. We can't, we, 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 we can't uh, uh, avoid association. It's life. It's life. Okay. You were four, Elder. But he jumped in. <laughs> yeah, yo, you, you know. Board has to discuss that next time. No, I'm a joke. Yeah. Um, you asked So that's the principle to apply to rhythm. Yeah. Well, how can a beat be untrue or true? How can a rhythm be true or true yeah. and honest or dishonest? I don't know, but like you know what your choice is. Um, a glorifying God, because like you said, um, it's, it's, it's down to personal taste and, and cultural. Um, and if it, and I haven't said anything, cultural. sister. Let's be no, clear. No, no, I haven't no, said anything. No, I, what no. I have done, so wait a minute, I, I like to be very precise. When we do this topic, I'm very precise because I'm understanding we have all that different opinions. I am, I am challenging, but I haven't made any conclusions and told anyone this is what is and not. But I have challenged our premises. So I haven't said this is it, this is not, amen, goodbye. And I accept what I'm saying, but I am challenging. And I said at the beginning, that's what I'm going to do. And that's all right. But I don't see how Philippians 4a can be a sound principle for deciding whether rhythm should be slow or fast. Because a river can't be true or untrue, or dishonest or not honest, have virtue. A river doesn't have virtue or not virtue. Well, I, I, I just think that, like, when, with your choices of what you listen to and how you respond or when you act, um, certain the word of God should govern, govern those. I agree. And then, so, that will, I, what, what I then, how I then respond to the music, if that's going to glorify God, that, that's dependent. I mean, those principles in the will then determine what, what I do with what I'm hearing. Do you know what I mean? I hear you. I hear you. Who's the next one? Um, I am a bit confused as to where this message is going. Um, but, um, I mean, you spoke about personal preference. If we ask every single member here, bring their music, what their personal preference is, and we all play that music in a worship service, then I wonder what the church would look like. I think we have to be careful, um, you know, about the message we're trying to preach, you know, especially for our young people, because music is very powerful and has the power to corrupt. But also, like, when we think of um, um, the stuff that are coming into our church, you know, the Adventist church is, like, you know, uh, quite different from what it used to be many, many years ago, and you have to be careful. It's so funny, yeah, actually this message is really funny, because today I was listening to um, a program like from the uh, North England Conference in 2015, and we were talking about issues like this, and um, they were saying that, um, you know, we are bringing in a lot of things, especially music, we are bringing in a lot of music from, you know, the Pentecostal churches and, you know, from all these different churches, and we are trying to follow them. They are not trying to follow us, but we are compromising. We are bringing a lot of compromises. And our church is not what it used to be. And um, people that are coming into the Adventist church, they are trying to leave those beasts that you hear from us there and the music. And then they are coming into, the, into our church and they are confused because they are finding the same thing they are trying to escape from. 
they find it into our church. So we have to be really careful, especially our young people. I agree, I agree. But well, I'm going to go back to the Word of God again. The Word of God says we can use instruments that have only one job, and that's percussion. My question still stands. What guides us, or should guide us, or what principles should guide us? I've got the percussive instrument. How do I, am I allowed, I've got drums. Can I play the drums? No, some people say no. But here you have the Word of God speaking to you and I, saying it's fine to have a timbre. My point is, we can say what we want, but if we're not going to admit that's my personal opinion, then that's another problem. For when God speaks, we can't then say one breath, I believe everything the word of God says. Then I show you a scripture that says, well, Lucifer was created with percussive abilities. Psalm says you can use percussive instruments, and then we're still going to go away and tell the young people you can't use the drums. This is a problem. It's the elephant in the room. It's a massive problem. If you say you can't use a drum because I don't like it, that's more honest and practical than to try and use God's word to substantiate a personal opinion. It's more honest to say association. It's more honest to say the way it's played is not good. It's more honest and intelligent and sound reasoning than to say, but drums are wrong. Why? Because blah, 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 blah. But well, we haven't got one scripture because the word of God doesn't say percussion is wrong. Maybe how it's played. Obviously, and we, I think we all agree on that, how it's played. Um, you had your hand up laid at the back, but let the elder, I mean, unless you put it down, do you want to say? She's looking. Do you have your hand up, David? Yeah. No? Sure? Go on. Joe fan. One. Sorry. After elder, did I? Did I give you a number? No. That four. You was four, but you got skipped. So five. And let's start again. One. And the, um, two. Three. Four. Anybody else? Five. Five. Please remember your numbers. I don't want to miss anybody out. Yes. Uh, there is nothing wrong with the instrument themselves. The Bible does use it in Psalms, and it mentions these, these things in Psalms. In fact, as I said before, as the Bible said, um, Lucifer was created with pipes and drums, timbres. Tam, uh, those are uh, mini drums, okay? But the combination of the, the, the type of instrument together can create a problem, all right? Now, I want to go back to the experiment that was done because it's profound. It might seem simple, but it's profound. This is a living thing. And if it can affect the plant as it did, it means, therefore, that we have got to be careful. It's not just the lyrics we're talking about. But the combination of the beats can do something to us. If, if, if because I, I, I don't know the intent. I would have to look at the intent why this experiment was done in the beginning. And if there was a follow up to this to try it on animals as well. But I, I figure that if you had tried that same thing without any association to an animal, they would have reacted differently to the different beats. Can I jump in quickly? Different, uh, yes. Uh, no, so, uh, and I think that, you know, uh, the, there is no hard and fast. You know, there are some things that you, you, you cannot put uh, a black and white thing to. You, I, I don't think I would put a black and white thing to this, but we have got to be careful. I'm just saying that we have got to be careful, even in just the, 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 the rhythm, not just the lyrics. Both of them will, can create even more powerful um, uh, emotions. Yeah. I'm going to say my point because there's a few people want to say it, and then I'll make my, my point. So who's next? Two. Two. I wanted to say about the 
classical music because um, he made some classical music and I would say if it's secular music uh, I would say it's good influence because like you said the, the classical music and um, they was talking about evil things <laughs> and even uh, um, myself I listen a lot of classical music and um, I can um, I can feel uh, most of the time that that um, composer is composing not under uh, right spirit but there is also religious music, classical music and you can feel the presence of God but I didn't want to talk about it now uh, you ask about rhythm uh, so I would say if the rhythm in the music makes your heart beat faster it's wrong for the health issue and also it is um, syncopative rhythm that's wrong as well because that makes that confuse your heart, heart rhythm and also when it's repeating it's kind of put people into um, like a hypnotizing mood so those guidance you can recognize whether that, that music is uh, good to play and listen or not because for example if I listen uh, uh, somewhere music where it's um, that heavy beat and it's very fast and uh, I start straight away having headache uh, my heart will start to be faster and I can I don't feel well so those principles tells me that this type of music isn't good to listen is that for a principle that how you feel because the same music if you said michael this one doesn't make me feel good and i listen to it and i'm like man i like this how do we explain that experience someone will go to the further to the extreme and go you just ain't got god that's fine mm -hmm. and i've been told that so i'm like wow that's amazing man okay but it's not because what i, I like because because i'm not saying you're going to say yeah. i'm just saying it's subjective mm -hmm. You feel that, what is that? That's not. But based on, based on, um, for example, if you check your heartbeat, it's not what you like. It's how your body responds. Well, a bit. Sorry, let me jump in quickly. I'm not trying to cut you. When we exercise, our heart beats faster. That's not against health. That's for health. So saying just because a beat will make your heart beat faster is not automatically a reason to say it's now wrong. And syncopation, again, I've heard this argument, I used to believe this, until I actually researched what syncopation is. All it means is the emphasis is on the two and the four. And many of our hymns are emphasis on the two and the four. We just don't know that because it's not being emphasized. Um, That's it. No, syncopated is, for example, if it's beat one, two, two. three, Four. Right. So we. No, no, no. That's not syncopation. No, no, no. I, I, is there a musician here? Yes. Oh, shame! <laughs> so I'm gonna go home now. <laughs> so all that that's what I'm saying. Syncopated means before you should do it. So, for example, one, two, and did you, did which is what I said, isn't it? On so, emphasis on the two and no, four. No, no. So, this is no hobby. One, two. Normal, yep. so, and syncopated just before too. So, so that's okay. before. So yeah, I, I kind of I knew that I didn't explain myself right because so I listen to syncopated music. music all the time. So I'm sorry for disrespecting. So that beat, the second beat before. Look, one. Yes, and yes. And also, you're not exercising for how many hours, and then when you listen to that, that type of music, people, people can listen people to can hear some, for hours. So it's just, no, sorry, I can hear a lot of, like, muff, can we let um, her speak please? So continue, sorry. So, for example, if you exercise, you don't exercise for hours, and if you listen to that music, you can listen from morning to evening, and this is, from health point, I would say, not good. But, and listen, that's, that's taking that to the extreme, isn't it? Because if you listen to it for five minutes or an hour, someone listening to that music for the whole day, of course it's going to cause some problems. Do you see what I mean? It's like drinking too much water. I'm only drinking water 
like I learned the other day, if your water is white, if your pee, your urine, sorry, is white for too long, it's not good for health. Mm -hmm. And one more so, thing, our brain also gets addicted to the lost rhythm. So at some point, when you're listening a lot to it, you are kind of addicted and you need to listen and listen and listen. And when you stop listening, you listen to something. Right, but again, but is that for everybody? Yeah. Okay. It is, not me. Yeah. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We was quite confident, yes. <laughs> no, but it's not. I keep saying it. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I used to listen to hip hop when I was in I wasn't addicted. How do you know? What do you mean I know? Because I gave up like that. So, what, okay, what's an addiction? Describe how you know an addiction. When you can't do without it, yeah? You can't do without it, you need it, temper tantrums maybe, I didn't have any of that. We can't say, brothers and sisters, we can't say that that is for every single person on the planet who listens to syncopated music. Come on, brothers and sisters. I'm not saying what she said is, is erroneous, but you can't say that just because you're going to be addicted. Let me qualify my answer. It is known that our body responds to certain things like sugar, like sugar. But does that make it morally wrong, my brother? Well, it can do. If it elicits the wrong kinds of responses, you keep So, for example. But is that for you everyone? Watch, you watch, like, or is that association, my brother? It can't, can't say everyone because not everybody has the same kind of capacity. And some people are not Let me give you an example. You will notice that if you're watching a horror movie, they will play a certain style of music to prepare you for a frightening scene. And that usually conjures fear, uh, evokes fear in people's minds. Agreed. If it's something exciting, it will be a fast paced uh, track. You know, they, 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 um, they But notice it's, it's not the music that we're talking about, is it? will speed if they're listening to music in the car, which is going at a fast tempo, because the body naturally responds to the rhythm. Agreed. Yeah? So we can say that once they might be a hundred percent, right. Most people, the characteristic response to certain types of music is the same. And that is why the advertising industry, the movie industry, and so on, play on that. They evoke those those emotions. Can I jump in quickly? Okay, by using those styles of music. But the now, movie industry, what style of music is predominant? I don't watch movies, so I can't tell you. Ah, oh, brother, you used to watch movies then. What style of music is predominant? Classic. Well, classical. 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 But we don't fly classical. Do we? Let's be honest. I can't tell you what they play movies now. Well, what did they used to play when you used to listen to music? The same. Classical, classical. right. And classical can evoke any emotion, but we don't throw out classical. Sometimes a classical. No, no, no. Let's be honest. We don't. Free you know, plays classical country western. Yeah. Never anything that is probably syncopated. All we gotta recognize is God is the author of music. God Agreed. Created or inspired people. Agreed. Agreed. The instrument itself may not be wrong, but it can be played in a way that is wrong. There can be virtue in the music. Yeah, we can't, we can't discount that. But the question no, still remains, what governs what's right and wrong? I still Sorry? haven't had anybody answer. What governs what's right and wrong? This is it, but How do you know if the rhythm is wrong and how do you know if it's right? We can, we can use our Wait, response. Brothers, 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 I mean sisters and brothers. Let's try, I know this is a hot topic. Let's try and wait for our, 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 our hand. That's why I gave numbers. Yeah. Go on, try. Response, finish time. Yeah, finish. The response I it, it elicits in us can be a good guide as to but whether that music is appropriate. Sorry, Tino. Someone else must say that's wrong. So, Tino, I we I think I'm agreed on that, you know. But what I'm saying, then does that make that morally wrong because it elicits a response in me or some section of society because of association? So yes. I, when I responded to the brother, but that's not that's subjective. Even if it's subjective, not brother. If it if it encourages. Let's, let's get clear on definition. I feel yeah. none of you are understanding. When some the Sabbath is objective. The law of God is objective. It's not subjective. We know what subjective means, right? Yeah. Right. It's not subject to time, place, culture, or opinion. It doesn't change. No. So there's not a scenario where 
Sabbath breaking is okay. Even if I was in prison, yeah. right? And they're like, you have to work today. God's expecting me to take some licks. Amen? Because yeah. it's the Sabbath, right? Isn't he not? Yeah. You better pray for, you, you're gonna get licked today, man. Pray for some strength, yeah? All right, Sabbath, you can't keep the Sabbath. He's expecting me to go on that crucifix, if that's the penalty, right? Doc. So that's complete objective. Not subject to it. So I'm saying, I'm not discounting, brother, and I, I've said a few times, association, we have to take consideration. The power of association, subjectiveness, but do we then take those experiences, which are valid, but then say that makes it morally wrong because we have an association with it, others may not, and we know they don't. And this is what causes, uh, I, I'm saying, I'm suggesting, this is what may cause a confusion because we're not given a sound principle down the line. We're given our personal subject experience, which are valid. And I, that's why I said to brother, I, I would deal with the, uh, 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 an issue of music, let's say certain style of music being played at a certain time in the service, by saying to the young person, the association that that's going to bring is not appropriate. <laughs> I'm not going to say that that's morally wrong. And because of that association, it wouldn't be wise to use it. That's what I would say, and that's what I'm suggesting. I'm not suggesting anything else. That's what I'm saying. I'm just putting that, that idea. I'm not saying you have to accept it, and I'm not saying what you're saying is wrong at all as well. I'm not saying that, because I understand it. No, and I agree with what you're saying. What I'm saying is that didn't make it morally wrong. Yes, I believe that music can be moral, and I think um, there's both Fair the enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Back to that there are certain types of music that have uh, a, a negative effect on our bodies. Um, you know, you mentioned the example of the heart being heart rate, um, rate being raised when you're exercising. That's an appropriate response to the body because the body is falling for more oxygen. If I'm sitting here and my heart rate suddenly starts to increase, that's an abnormal response. Not necessarily. And, and it's usually an indication of a problem with the body. But that's so what the, if, there's, if there's a stimuli that causes my heart to be faster when the body doesn't need it to be faster, that's the deleterious response to the body. Not, <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't agree with that because I can cut, I can give you five more scenarios, neutral examples where your heart will rise up and it laughter, I scare you. I know nah that's morally wrong because I've scared you. It's like and that's, that's a natural response to the body. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but what I'm saying is to make a moral art based upon subjectiveness is not sound. That's what I'm saying. Can I kind of just say Sorry sister, what number is you? <laughs> you know, every big music. I'm just trying to keep the quorum. We've got to keep time. No, it's <laughs> damaging to the mind. So it's like this, sister. Start again, start again. Every beat music is damaging to the mind. You know, I, I, what I've seen youth, I, I, work, I used to work in the hospital, and youth be sitting there listening to these every beat. And I'm telling you, the, I get the metal and different type of work. And when you look at them, they're zombies. They become zombies. Then I work as a literature evangelist. People, 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 people. And I work as a literature evangelist and I go sometimes to our fellow Brethren Church, New Testament Church. And the same similar music we are playing here. They're playing it. But let me tell you, brethren, in the morning you see them running from this part of the, the church down to the other part of the church and they have to spread blankets over them. Is that the is that good music? The question you is how know, when I it? look at Sister, sister, let me answer the question. What the problem was there was how long they're listening to how loud they listen to and the lyrics. That's what you're going to find. So there's a combination of things going on. So again, I'm not going to say this is bad music. One, the loudness, the, the frequency, and the lyrics. That's what's causing what you're seeing. It's in the house of God, right? I'm saying you're in the house of God, sister, as well. This is a different issue. I've never said that. We're not even discussing that. No, we're, I said we're, we're I know, here. sister, sister, I know, I'm, I'm not saying points not valid, but I'm not saying, we're not covering mixing in beats with Christian lyrics or secular tune 
I won't even deal with that yet. You I can't mean, separate them. No, that's a different discussion what I'm it trying to explain to you. can't separate them. It, it sister, is a damaging, sister, under, sister, sister, is damaging sister, to the mind and the brain. Sister, understand what I'm trying to say to you. All I'm saying is our focus of discussion, we're looking at just rhythm, the issue of taking secular rhythms we're hearing over here and putting Jesus with them is not a discussion I've even started. We've brought that onto the table. I'm, not, I'm saying we ain't got time to discuss that because that, that's going to take us more time. We just ain't got time. That's what I'm saying, sister. What you're saying is valid. It's true. I don't agree with taking some music and bringing it into the church. Not for your reasons, but for different reasons. But I agree with your stance. But I've come to a different reason as to why we shouldn't do it. Because there's one of motive. Okay? Let's do that for a second. There's one of motive. The motive is we need to use this to reach them. Uh, that's unbelief. And the Bible says whatever's not of faith is sin. So that's why that's wrong. But not so we will be in agreement in that sense, maybe from a different standpoint. But I'm a, I don't like that because our motive is wrong. We need, we need reggae gospel to reach black people. We need heavy metal to reach white people. That's the arguments we actually hear. Obviously more fancy, they call it the unchurch and postmodern mind, but that's really what they're saying. So from that reasoning, I don't agree because that's, a, that's from a standpoint of unbelief. And we shouldn't come from a standpoint of unbelief. Right? We should come from the standpoint of faith. What can we do according to God's word? Because God's word always works and we're always bringing people because it's God's word. So what I'm saying, sister, is we're just, we can't deal with that right now and unpack it. Now, because of time, I'm going to take two more points. Josh, I'm still missing that. You got your hand up or you just, young man? Paper, rock, scissors? Sorry. Oh, yes. We I told I should actually remember the numbers. Joel Fan first, Elder Joel Fan. And then um, after Elder Joel Fan, two more points, and then we'll. Um, I brought kind of like lost through the discussion. I think if we were to go back to your original question, um, my original question, about rhythm, what should guide us in, in when we're choosing how we. Use the rhythm. Right. But it's not what What I wanted to say, um, basically, for I think most of the things in terms of choosing um, all the styles and things like that is kind of, as you say, is more or uh, less like kind of subjective. Uh, I want to say thank God for some of us, for Robert Moffat. Say again. For, for, for Robert Moffat and the Sissy Wars um, who went to Africa right. and then they um, to introduce Christ or to introduce God. But when they go to Africa, those people were having music and then the music of celebration, uh, music of victory when they won wars. Music which they were doing um, towards um, the spirit medium. And then there were some instruments that they were using for the music. And unfortunately, we have put God in a kind of like cocoon these days, in which we say, um, if, if as an African man, I'm using a certain, I'm using the drums, or I'm using some of the instruments that we hear. Uh, it's wrong. I find that strange because all these instruments are created by people, and when I use that, it becomes kind of like you cannot approach God with this instrument. I think that is wrong. It's, it's, that's, they are using those instruments, like I said, they were, they, were, they were singing different songs, and then they are using those instruments. Like we're using the pianos, we're using the harps and everything else. What makes these right and what makes my beta and my drum wrong is because it's where and it's about who introduced Christ forward to me. It's a deep one. I agree with that. Two. Uh, two more questions. One, I let this young man speak because 
you said quite a few points and you haven't said anything. So one no no I said one and then two and then we'll wrap up. So you young man you'll be after the, the sister. Yeah maybe you might have yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I just want to answer that question. What governs and it's what guides us in what sort of music? I've just got one word, not word really, but uh, two words maybe to say what guides us. It's our relationship with God. That's what should guide us to what kind of music that we probably listen to. I know a lot of people have said a lot of things, uh, and some of those things were really great. Like what Alicia said, if you listen to a type of music which is wrong, but what is your relationship with your God? And also the sister there said, if you've got the God, the spirit of, the, of God, it will guide you to, the, to listen to the right music. So it is our relationship with our God, that's what should guide us. If the Holy Spirit is within you, and the, uh, the music comes which is not good, you will be guided, you will be told that that music is not right. So we should seek to have a good relationship with God and that relationship is going to guide us to what sort of music comes into our church and what sort of music we listen to, regardless of our different opinions. That's all I want to say. Young man? Um, I just want to add a point and say, uh, when it comes to music, um, my personal belief, but this is my personal belief, is that um, our music should uh, point us to Christ. It should convict us of our sins. Um, it should make one want to denounce or renounce his, his ways of, of, uh, of living, which are contrary to what God wants. And we notice that in our churches, uh, when we're playing upbeat music most of the time, um, it's more for, um, uh, excitement of the flesh we, we don't have time to sober up enough and to really um, uh, reflect on, 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 on what Christ has done for us upon the cross of power so when it comes to, to, to the styles of the music uh, which ones to, to listen to um, I might not have the, the uh, um, hard and fast rules that this is the music but at the end of the day, the music should point us to Christ, it should lead a sinner to repentance. And also about um, our, the type of instruments maybe to, to use. Uh, I'm from Africa. I find it uh, hard to, to relate to some of the, to most of the songs which are in the hymn book. Uh, for example, uh, we have songs like uh, Whiter Than Snow. In all my 20 years, I've never witnessed snow. I only witnessed it when I came here to, 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 to the UK. <laughs> so, no, no, so it makes, makes the, the hymn now not applicable in my situation, of which that's the one which we're using in Africa. Um, if you were to sing in Africa in England, uh, songs like um, I've wandered far away from home. Most you know, English people will be crying and they'll, they'll, they'll be feeling that connection with God. Uh, but with, for, for an African man, if you are to sing, nah, nah, there's a song, I don't know which uh, well, I would say in English, but I'll, I'll try and hum it. Because it talks about sorrow, and in Africa, they sorrow, they, people would, would, would cry. You get it. So I think with, when it comes to music, really, um, I, I can't really say which, which principles to, 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 to use, but at the end of the day, um, music should, should make one in, uh, an individual recount his sins, uh, be convicted. Thank you. Thank you for your points. So let me summarize a few points. First John 2.15 warns us about worldliness. Love not the world, neither things are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So here is our concern when we're looking at music, because the word of God admonishes us we should not love the world. So we all understand that the devil then is going to try and make his business to get us to love the world. And Common sense will tell you the only way to make someone love something that is bad or harmful is to make it a feeling. 
And with music, that's easy. How am I going to make sin attractive? How am I going to make this sinful lifestyle attractive and appealing? Well, I'm going to combine it with things that make you feel good, i.e. a beat. And here is the challenge of association. Satan has taken a lot of what I, has taken beats, which I would say are neutral, and has associated that with things that are evil and wicked. And because we're born in the world, we're born in society, most of us have gone to state education, our first association with that thing is it was making me feel a natural good response to this evil lifestyle. So then when I accept Christ, my immediate association is going to be negative. Does that make sense? So the Bible, James 4 verse 4, talks and again warns us not to be lovers of the world. See, if you're a lover of the world, you're an enemy of God. So this, there, so we have to discuss this idea because there's two extremes. If you listen to this, you're of the world, and this causes judgment and debate and condemnation. And this is why I came here to challenge us to think about our ideas, because some of us have ideas which I believe just cause condemnation and judgment, which is unnecessary. So the Bible does warn us against worldliness. What does it mean to be worldly? If I listen to this, does it mean I'm worldly? Even if the content is positive, I could never tell my child, turn that off because I'm associated with an evil and he's learning from the song to respect me and go to school. To me, that's insane. To me, I'm just saying, to me, that's insane. He left with a message of, I'm gonna stay, but that man is trying to, to stay in school. Why take it to, I put an unnecessary argument. But, uh, what was my next part I'm gonna make? Oh yes, relationship should guide us. My problem with that answer, brothers and sisters, if, I to, if you to say to someone outside who doesn't believe in God, that answer won't work because they have no relationship. If we were to take music out of the topic and put food in its place, and they said, what should go, what food is right? You can say, alcohol, wrong, cigarettes, wrong. But in all of our answers, we're using answers like the Spirit of God, our relationship. We haven't given hard and fast after that proper we've had loads of I think you to our Christmas point that she made. There is a Wait, sorry, say that again? If you can't really dismiss the point that she made. And remind me of the psychosomatic response to music. Music does affect our body. I'm not I'm not dismissing hold up one side. Let me make let me be clear. I'm never dismissed. I never dismiss. Uh, it, sorry, it may come across that way, if that's the, what I conveyed. Let me be clear. I'm not dismissing the effect of music when I feel boy. All I said was that it's subjective. So I acknowledge those effects, but I'm saying if it's subjective, you can't then say because it makes me feel this way, then now it makes everyone feel this way. It's not subjective, it's science. But it's. How's that science? Pause, pause, pause for a second. Sister, sister, it doesn't make everybody feel that way. It just doesn't. Yeah, but not with everyone. Yeah, but uh, sister, listen to what I'm saying to you. Not with everyone. Are we clear on that? That's what I'm saying. Is it with everyone? It doesn't really matter. Brother, brother, Clyde, Clyde, hold up. No, no, no. If we're trying to establish right and wrong, the Sabbath is universal for everyone. You, so let's not say we're trying to clarify righteousness and unrighteousness, and then I'll say what? It's not for everyone. It doesn't matter, right? No, 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 no. One clap. Hold up. All right, go ahead, clarify. So, I can smoke 100 cigarettes a day and never get one Yeah, but that's not a reason not to do it. But, brother, that's not a reason not to do it, is it? No, but that's not the only reason. That's your reason. That's not my reason. Yeah, but brother, that's not what makes it right or wrong if you're going to get lung cancer, is it? Right. So, on which part of your body? No, it does matter. 
course it it matters, brother. We have to be precise here. It's because it affects your mind, impairs your judgment. That's my reasoning. That may not be your reasoning. Yeah, but you just said it might not harm everybody. But it harms everybody's minds. It impairs everybody's judgment. Every person. Sorry? Yeah, of course, very little bit, but it does affect everybody's mind. But Clan, I never, I, I, I don't know how, how to repeat myself. I have not negated that music has a physical effect. All I've said, if it hasn't, if that effect, you feel that effect, your heart goes faster. But if it's not for somebody else, you then can't say, well, because it makes me feel that way, it's morally wrong. I don't know how we can reason that. I, I'm, I'm literally backwards to, why don't we just say, because it makes me feel this way, I don't want to listen to it. No, 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 not music. We're talking, remember my question was about beat, and this is what's confusing the book. My question is very clear. What should guide us in our beats? But let me, let me, let me um, wrap up with some scripture so I can conclude so it's not left so in the air. Is that alright? Because I've kept here and I don't want to keep you for any longer. Amen. I don't mind, but it's, it's not good, it's not wise. So let me. No, I need to. I need to wrap up. Oh, go on. Well, that's all right. Unfortunately, that has to be the case. It takes time because everybody. I'm not trying to convince everyone, but they should stay and try and find. Well, who do I agree with? And let me discuss this afterwards because that's how we're going to come arrive at truth of these discussions because it's not going to just. And, and as well, they're waiting for, well, you should do this. It don't make no sense either because you're not going to do it anyway. So, what are you talking about? I'm not clear. Read, was you even listening? I saw it on your phone. And I can see this. So, they should just be turned to be patient and, and afterwards, I'm gone, discuss it some more. Go to the Bible and, and hash out but until we come to clear decisions because I'm not saying we should listen to second music with bad content. That's clear. If we want to disagree with me that we shouldn't have beef, that's fine. But one thing we can't leave and say is that I'm promoting the idea that we should listen to music with bad content. That's just clear. And we clear that from the Bible. There's music that can instruct us into righteousness. That's music that should be listened to. But I'm trying to I'm trying to get us to think about the big elephant in which is rhythm. Because even though we agreed on that, the issue is when we played in the church, it gets a problem because some people are not comfortable with the rhythm. And that's okay because of association. And so, oh, he's crying. Oh, man. So, 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 let me go down this train of thought because this, this kind of will wrap up what my, what my thought is. And so, how I would deal with that is this. You're going to beat me up for this, but remind me your name again, please. No, you look elder, yes, bro. Norris. Norris. Norris says, man, I don't like playing reggae, you know? I mean, you should be a bad man. Right? I don't like it. I should have the love and respect. See, and that's a different issue now. I should have the love and respect to say, I don't know, what, what do you like? Man, I like something. Why can't I surrender that? Why? And if I want to listen to my radio gospel at home, that's me in my yard. Do you see? Now some people go, you shouldn't. That's your opinion. I don't tell to run your house. But in the house of God, the people of God, everybody needs to be catered for. Now if the majority choose hymns, tough. Hymns it is. Because I love Jesus. That's my attitude. That's, I love Jesus. So, John Fan don't want no, I don't know what he wants, but what did John Fan don't like? And there's argument. We, 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 we burn the drums then. He's going to make you happy, because I can still worship God without it. 
So, and that's another debate altogether, which is the, 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 uh, the, the mentality. How do we come to unity? For me, it's simple. Those of us, if I'm, if I'm of the minority, it has to be a democracy. I'll be voted out. Now, if I'm fighting for drums, then I've got to check my relationship with God. Because I'm not fighting for worship, you know. I'm fighting for my personal preference. I'm fighting for my... It's my... Now, they don't listen to my personal preference. Tough. Tough. They didn't listen to Jesus. They crucified him. We crucified him. We didn't listen to Jesus. You see? So, that's, and then that's another issue. And in that, if we brought that mindset into our discussion, then it doesn't matter what you like or what you don't like. The board is voted, no drums. You worship God in your heart. You need drums to worship God? You need rhythm to worship God? Are you serious? Do you know what worship really is? Satan said to Jesus Christ, fall down and worship me. What about music? It's about the life. You're telling me you're getting upset because there's no rhythm. You need to check what your relationship is based on then. Because your relationship should be based on Christ. Music is an expression. See, it's only an expression. It's not the thing itself. When I'm walking down the street, I should be worshipping. When I'm in school, I should be worshipping. Where's my mind? Because Jesus says, I don't know why it's gone for me. This is Matthew 4. I don't want to misquote the text. Just look what Jesus said. So Satan says, then, um, verse 9, Matthew 4. And say unto him, all these things will I give thee, if thou fall down and worship me. Notice carefully Jesus' words. Then say Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Serve. Did you catch it? Serve. True worship about service. True worship is who do I serve? Who do I surrender to on a day-to-day basis? Now we're all in that growth experience. Before we get back up, we're trying to serve God to the best of our ability every single day by the grace of God. I'm living by grace. <laughs> what about anybody else? I'm living by grace because I make mistakes, but God is gracious. So these debates are important, not debates, these discussions are important for us to come into unity so that we can express our worship express our service on this day without the how oh, why do that for we have and each congregation is going to be different yes. so why that church down the road got drugs because they're fast and they're okay with it we are we not and that you've decided to come here so worship god sing with all your heart and your soul you do not need no rhythm to express your love and praise for yourself you don't need it i want it I like it, but it happens sometimes. But that doesn't affect my Sabbath, ever. Never has. When I came to Christ, I went, come on, wasn't a drum that brought me? It was Jesus. So when you're singing, pass me now, gentle Savior. Do you know I can't, do you know I can't really sing that one? It mashed me up, you know. The tears come, you know, you're like, pass me. You know you try to sing the one, and they have a special meaning to you, like, Pass me not, you know. When I was walking on shit, I was 18 years old, doing foolishness, and I knew what was right from wrong. Grew up in the church. Pass me not, gentle Savior. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. Do you know how powerful that is? I don't need no. I don't need that. I don't need none of that. So if you want to burn my drugs, burn them, yes. Burn them, I don't care. But if you allow them, I'll be happy. Don't I don't mind. Put a little spice on it. I don't mind. But too much spice. Mm. Hold up, brother Clive. Brother, in love, hold up and wrap it up. Because I've given where I'm coming from. And I need to be clear, brother Clive. But be patient, brother Clive. Please. Because if I like to speak, it's going to confuse the mouth. People are going to leave, right? What's Michael actually saying? So this is. The Spirit's leading, I'm serious. Nice question has led me to what I'm actually trying to convey. Is that all right? I don't want anyone to be confused. I have challenged our own premises, but I want anyone to be confused on what do I, what, what's the point I'm just trying to really say, all right? And I think I've made it really clear so far. So, I lost my train of thought.
Go on, brother. Well, if a certain type of, a certain type of beat makes you feel like worshiping God, and that's the type of beat that makes you feel like the best mood, is it okay to listen to? You know, it's a question. Yeah, I get you. Let me, ask you. Let me ask you a question. But the question is this. Are you placing, I know it's talking about yourself, so I'm asking the question in the first person. But my question is this. If it's not there, how do you feel? That's what I'm asking. Let's be honest. If it's not there, be honest with me. If it's you you're talking about, be real with me. How do you feel? If it's not there, be real with me. Okay, you must say this. Be real with me, man. If it's not there, do you feel like you don't want to do it? But if the B is there, you'd be like, yeah, man, I can jam to this. Come on, man, be honest with me, man. Come on, I was honest with you. Come on. Come on. If the B is there, how do you feel? Like you want to wake up in the morning. Is there anything wrong with feeling like, yeah man, I want to go to church? Is there anything wrong with the feeling? No. But the question is this, brother. If the feeling is not there, when the beat stops, my question to you is this. What then do you do to motivate you? Great the beat. Sorry? Great the beat yourself. No, what if the music's not there? We're with life, brother. Beats are not always there to help you. We're dealing with life. Brothers come to you and say, yo man, let's move, let's go, let's go to that shop, man, take some drink. There's no beat now, what decision do you make? There's not that good feeling that you feel when the beat is there to worship God. There's just you and your brethren now telling you to go and do nothing. And they're around you like, come on, man, what's what? What, come on, man? What, come on? How do you feel now? What do you need at that time to make the right choice? Brothers and sisters, please, this is an important part, come on. What do you need now? Huh? You don't know, brother, you are honest. Praise God. Now let me tell you what you need now. You need to know that God is with you despite what you feel. Because there's nothing wrong with to feel like, you know, it's a little, it's got Jesus to it, get right, yeah! I'm not really doing this for you, though. Trust me, I will not be doing this if you don't ask a question. Right? There's nothing wrong with that. Come on, man. God created us with emotions. God created us to feel, to be emotional, to have an emotional response. You see a bridge, yeah, what's up? You'll be like, yeah, same, 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 same. There's you might be like, yeah, yeah, same. And we go, yeah, 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 what are you doing? Why are you all God created us that way? Music is an emotional response, but it's two extremes. Where the extreme is, I need this thing, man. There ain't no beat, man. Why are you worshiping, bro? Boring. That's one extreme. But what we need is something to surpass the emotion. So when that good feeling is not there, you know God's got you. When, when there's debates in the church, you know God's got you. When, when the service is a bit dry, I'll be honest with you, man. Service is dry enough for me as well, you know. Don't think. You look at me, I'm happy every Sabbath to be in service. I'm only there, brother, because of what Jesus has done for me in my life. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I feel just as bored today as falling asleep. My eyes were like, come on man, put some papers in your speaking man, come on, I've had a hard week. My granddad had two operations. My granddad, I went to France, drove from England to France non-stop for my granddad, right? I need something this Sabbath man. I need something man, like, God are you going to work, what are you going to do? I need something. But guess what, when I didn't feel that today, the word of God. He, let me read this to you, man. Let me read this to you, man. Watch this. Let me read this to you. Hebrews 13. It's not my words. Hebrews 13, verse 5. I'll read the last line. It says this. Hebrews 13, verse 5. It says, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. The question for you, brothers, do you believe that? And the reason why that's true is not because the Father said it, because Jesus died on the cross to show you he's never going to leave you for safety. If someone's ready to die for your sins, 
If somebody has died for you, they know you fucked, they know you steal, they know you're to foolishness, but they died for you. They died for your sins. What else are they ready to do for you? Of course he's not going to leave you and never forsake you. So this issue of music and worship, even if it's not there, even if it's not there, even when the service is dry, the, the, the arguments of the church, we don't leave his church because it's his church. If I was to take off my shirt, allegorically speaking, you see double acts in my back. You see arrows, and it wasn't for people outside. You see arrows in my back, scars, but why did I left? Because Jesus brought, brought my sins. I'm not going to leave him because someone said something to me. How am I going to leave Jesus because someone don't agree with me? What? It's fine. I'm here for Christ. But these are my brothers and sisters. We're all in the same boat together. Everyone has their own little issues. Everyone has their own little mess. We only could see. But the only thing that makes us get along is the love of God. Seeing us that we're on the same road. So when I see you trip up, condemnation will come from my lips. Grace comes from my lips. Because I've been in the same mess, the same place, and it's not easy. So when you have when you when you have that understanding and you and you've got it, brother, you're getting it because you ask the question. You see, now I'm going a bit long because I'm passionate. And I don't, I'm, I'm aware that maybe I said too much. Hopefully you got it all. But did that make sense? Uh, praise God, what's your name? Tando. Respect for your question, seriously. You see what it brought out, man? I was getting excited. <laughs> yes. A real question. Brothers and sisters, we have to close. This is time for prayer. I've been here for a while. I've kept you for a long enough. I really appreciate your comments, your honesty, your frankness. It was good. And my last closing, closing my last closing remarks is this. We need to come together as God's people to unite. And music is not controversial. Pride is what makes this issue controversial. I'm not saying among us here today, but that's what causes debates. Pride, not a willingness to give and take. Music is not controversial. Food, dress, oh, those are controversial topics. I don't believe they're controversial. I believe, unfortunately, there are ideas that some are willing to give up for the sake of our brothers and sisters. And if we took more time to really look at what Jesus has done for us, we'll be more willing to give and take some of our opinions to make somebody else happy and to make their stay here worthwhile. Does that make sense? So I hope and pray that you gain the blessing and respect for the question. As I close in prayer, I'm going to choose to kneel. You just bow your heads with me. Father in heaven, I've done my best and that's all I can do. Father, we've got our different opinions and our ideas, but I pray those differences do not divide us. Difference of opinion should never divide us. Because one, one thing we are united on, and I'm hoping we are united on by faith, is that Jesus died for us. That should be the biggest motivation to help us to be willing to understand each other's points. I'm not saying I have every answer and every right thing in every area. But I am confident that, Father, we need to look at this and be more precise on what your word says. For the sake of our young people, because they're the ones who are affected by this topic more than any of us. They're the ones who go out in this world and this thing of music affects them like we underestimate. So, Father in heaven, give those who did stay those who were listening, willing to listen, bless them, Father, please, with your Holy Spirit. Bless them with faith that they will continue this journey, this inquisitiveness, to understand for themselves, not music, but Jesus. Because when we understand you, everything falls in its place. We have no fear. We're not going to be worried about oh, what if I make a mistake. Because we understand grace covers us. Grace will forgive us. Grace will empower us. Grace will transform us. Grace takes back sinners a hundred times over. So Father in heaven, I just thank you for giving me this opportunity. Be with this church as they continue to do your will. They talked about witnessing and evangelism. Be with those who do that work and bless those who are doing other parts of the work in the vineyard. I pray for all these things and I thank you for hearing and answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>